Hey guys, it's Dave and it's that time again where I tell you about what I've been doing in my own portfolio and how my investments have been going. Before we dive into that though, I do just need to thank a few new channel members. We have Sam and then Teddy448. I don't think I thanked you last time, so I'm including that here. And then of course, and Lansoon rejoined, so thank you very much for rejoining. And thank you to all the channel members who do continue to support on a monthly basis. Okay, so markets have been crazy. We have the return of the mean stocks. We have markets hitting all-time highs. Rocket Lab had a big day yesterday, not so good of a day today. Um, there's a lot going on and I've been making some moves myself. Let's go ahead and talk about it. Just quickly before we jump into that, if you haven't subscribed already, I do hope you'll consider doing that by the end of this video. Every new subscriber really helps out so much and is very much appreciated. All right, guys, let's dive into my investing updates. So starting off with my overall portfolio performance on a month to date basis, we're looking pretty flat right now, which is fine. Obviously earlier on in the month, I was having a great old time, but we did have a drop off recently followed by a pretty sharp rally. And uh, funny enough, now we're right back where we started. So if you look at Rocket Lab specifically, one of my bigger holdings on an individual company basis, obviously it's had a great couple weeks here, really a great month over Overall, since those lows of around 3.5 it's been on a steady upward climb yesterday we had a massive jump it seemed to be caught up somewhat in this mean stock mania with the return of roaring kitty <laughs> This stuff is pretty wild. You could never make this up. Um, yeah, anyway, didn't move as much as, say, a Virgin Galactic or obviously GameStop or some of those others, but did move like 10% in a single day. So to see a pullback of around 4% today, completely fine, really. Uh, not too upset about that. And I don't think the trend right now is broken anyway. So we'll have to see what this holds going forwards. Now on to some of my updates. So first of all, my Rocket Lab put options. If you've been following the channel for a while, you're probably aware that I've had these out there for maybe a month and a half or so, maybe a little bit more. Uh, basically, I sold options that would force me to buy the stock for $4. And for that, I received proceeds of $1,400. Interesting to note that it did actually drop below $4 at the expiry date or just before the expiry date. But what I was able to do instead of of having to buy those shares at a loss was roll it forward by two weeks and get paid some extra cash to do that. Obviously, the person on the under other end of the trade thinking that there was more downside to Rocket Lab from there, whereas, of course, I was thinking there was more upside. So it regained that $4 mark and expired worthless last Friday, meaning I just keep all of the premium myself so that $1,400 cash Basically, I get away with it scot-free. And what did I do with that cash? Well, of course, I bought more Rocket Lab shares. So I used about $1,315 from that to buy Rocket Lab shares. I came out to about 300 shares. And the price I got for it was 4.3, not as great as it was at the lows, but that's just when the put expired and I didn't want to put that money to work before the expiration date because you can kind of get into trouble if you do that. So um, I wasn't wanting to play the wait and see game, you know, maybe it'll drop, maybe whatever. That was the price it was at when the money was available and that's when I decided to pull the trigger. Nothing I hate more than thinking maybe it'll drop a few more percent and then the thing just keeps going up and then you're stuck with cash in the bank that you really wanted to invest. I hate it when that happens. So usually I just, if there's something I want to buy, I take it the price that it is at. I am trying again because I think Rocket Lab $4 puts are a great way to make money fairly safe and I have the portfolio to be able to handle this risk. Now it's very important that you understand I am accepting a decent amount of risk here. If this did get triggered, I could very well be forced to buy $16,000 worth of Rocket Lab stock. So you need to know where that money's coming from. If you do likewise, and I'm not trying to say this is free money, you know, there's always a trade off and I am taking on risk in order for this money. But for me, the risk reward is absolutely worth it. Having said that, the stock is trading higher right now. So this hasn't executed over the past couple of days. I don't want to take more or I don't want to take less than 20 cents 
per share on this. So I'm hoping it will trigger. That should net me around 800 bucks if it does trigger. But if Rocket Lab continues to climb, I may not get it. We'll have to wait and see how this one plays out. But the nice thing is if Rocket Lab does continue to climb, then at least my main shares will do well. And you know I was going to buy some main, some more shares when we were down in the mid threes. I think that level is an excellent bargain. I uh, wasn't planning to do it, but when the stock got that low, well... I just had to. So um, yeah, a couple different trades here. The bottom one is just a very small amount of cash that I had sitting in cash in one account. Figured I might as well put it to work. So 320 bucks at $4 per share. But the bigger trade here is the top one. I got a 3.6 price. Now, if you're watching closely, you probably could have gotten a 3.5, but I'm totally fine with a 3.6. Obviously, you're never going to time anything absolutely perfectly at the exact bottom. Uh, that's the price I saw, and I was more than willing to take it, which I did to the tune of $4,200, adding 1,170 shares to my share count and lowering my cost basis, which I think is absolutely amazing amazing. Speaking of that cost basis, now let's take a look at my total share count. This is divided between three separate accounts. So the first account has 1,800 shares at a cost basis of $4. Second account, just under 5,800 shares at a cost basis of 411. The third account has, you know, 7,600 ish shares at a cost basis of 4.63. That one's a bit higher. That's when I first started buying before it dipped even more. Ultimately, I think all three of those cost bases will be fine and I'll end up doing well on each of them. But if you average it out, that means I'm now at over 15,000 shares, 15,190 to be exact, with a cost basis of 435 which I think will be great in the long run when Rocket Lab does end up being a full end-to-end -end space company one of the biggest around doing launch building their own satellites eventually operating their own constellation really no worries and now that they've added that cash to the balance sheet uh, it seems very de-risked from my point of view anyway that does mean though I have invested 66 thousand dollars which is a good chunk of change for me at least maybe some of you guys out there are whales sitting on massive portfolios uh, i do have other items in my portfolio i do have a good dividend paying side with etfs and dividends that i like to maintain so i'm not completely you know all in on the riskier side of the portfolio, which is where Rocket Lab does lie. But it is a very good position for me and one that has grown much larger than I originally planned it to be. But I think that much larger position growth has absolutely been tied to a large amount of research and a large amount of conviction. So I don't have a problem having this much invested in Rocket Lab because I feel like I've done that research and I have the conviction to match the amount that I have invested. So that is where my position in Rocket Lab lies. Feel free to tell me in the comments below what your average cost basis is, if you were able to add more shares down in those mid threes. And of course, congratulations to everyone else who did add more shares in the mid threes, because now we're sitting at around 4.3-ish, 4.4. So those are at a very solid gain very quickly. Now, I did also do some tax loss harvesting recently. This one is completely unrelated to Rocket Lab, but we did have tax season just pass, and I had a significant amount of capital gains from the past year, which resulted in me paying more taxes by far than I ever had back to the government, back to the tax man, which was pretty rough because... You know, you have the money, but at the end of the day, you're not necessarily knowing how much you're going to have to pay back at the tax return time. And you either have to sell stocks or have the cash available. I did have the cash available, but it kind of went through a lot of my dry powder, unfortunately. And, you know, that's just how it is. So this year I decided and I made it a goal to try and harvest tax losses when I can, meaning that if I capture these losses and sell companies that I have at a loss, 
that can go against my gains and should even out a little bit at least and help me to pay less taxes next year this time around. Uh, this one, fairly small position, Algonquin, it's kind of a power and utilities company, uh, only a cost basis of around 3700 but it's way down to 1600 This is a dividend payer, pays about 6%. So it's funny, you know, it goes on the safe side of my portfolio, the dividend side, but it has been extremely poorly performing. Um, what I could do is buy this back in one month when I book that loss, or I could put this $1,600 into another, you know, dividend pay or something that I think belongs on that safe side of my portfolio and book that capital loss. However, uh, obviously this, you know, 1600 maybe 2000 something loss, while it's significant, um, it's not really enough to counteract a lot of the gains I've been seeing and um, I don't have a ton I can do about that because I am in the position where I don't have a ton of losses right now which is a good problem to have but it just means you know I better beware tax season next year and have some cash available to once again pay the tax man which is never fun. Um, yeah, let me know if you have any funny tax stories or the most you've had to pay back at the tax return time. For me, it was pretty painful, I'm not going to lie. Uh, by the way, I also do still hold some Rocket Lab call options. I have one shorter term option down here, which I kind of bought just for fun, and I thought it would be fun for the channel to follow how it performs. Seems to be moving, you know, a lot more significantly than the underlying stock, which is what you would expect. So when we had that big move yesterday that was up like 10% or so, this option moved more like 30%. So that gives you an idea of how these things go. This is going to expire on October 18th at, with a strike price of $5. So I'm looking for it to move towards or past that $5 mark over in the next few months to try and get a gain on that. If I do lose it, I'm completely okay with that though because I did buy this, you know, expecting it to be a risky gamble for fun, not what I consider to be a core position in money that I can't afford to lose. This longer term option is a leap, it's called, which is basically expiring January 16th, 2026. So very long time out. It's a $7 call. Uh, my plan on that is that I think Rocket Lab should be well beyond $7 by that point. You have Neutron launching, you're looking profitability dead in the eye, and hopefully I can make a outsized return on this $1,000 investment. We'll see. I mean, after this bounce back, we are pretty much at break even at these again, maybe down a little bit. So I put a thousand bucks into this. It's at 939. So down slightly still. And then the shorter term one, I put 536 bucks into it and it's at 511. So at least these have moved back to break even a little bit, as well as my overall position on the stock. You saw my uh, average cost basis was around 4.35. So I'm right around break even at that again now it's funny you know when i when the stock is down i always think to myself damn i kind of wish i was in the green or break even it just feels better and when the stock is up like it is now i'm like damn i wish it was lower so i could sell some more of those puts or whatever <laughs> it's funny how the psychology of that goes but you know i guess i shouldn't complain being at break even now because it is a large position for me and hopefully that put will get executed at some point We'll have to see how that goes over the next few days. My Tesla is another big position that has also done pretty well for me recently following that last earnings call. So pleased to see about that as well as do have a, as I said, safer side of the portfolio that has been delivering me some dividends and good returns as the overall markets themselves are near all time highs. So the ETFs and index funds are participating in that rally even more, which is fun to see. Overall, I'm pretty pleased with how the portfolio has gone over the past couple weeks. We've seen Rocket Lab bouncing off those bottoms nicely. I was able to add a pretty solid number of more shares in the mid threes, bringing that cost basis down to 4.35. And I was able to capture the full 1400 bucks on those put options. Turns out for free, which I then turned into more Rocket Lab shares, which I consider to be, you know, free. So uh, can't complain there at all. 
Hopefully Tesla will continue its run. The safe side of my portfolio has been very strong, continuing to pay me dividends and the index funds are quite high right now as those overall markets are close to all time highs. So let me know what you've been doing with your portfolio down in the comments below. I'll be sure to check that out. If you haven't already subscribed, I hope you'll consider doing that because it's a big help. And if you're already subscribed, those likes really help out with the algorithms. I hope you guys have a great rest of the day and rest of the week, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.